Hey everybody, it's Robert coming to you from the Old Bird Farm and this morning out here on the farm we're going to be building cattle panel trellises. Obviously I've already got one up right here. It's still in the adjustment process but super simple and it's going to be awesome. It doesn't look like much at the moment but when it's covered with flowers and gourds and other vining things that aren't wisteria it's going to be absolutely amazing. So let me show you how we've done this. Um, obviously we're using a cattle panel that's just a little bit bent but that's okay um, for this and T-post on the side so I mean obviously super simple construction we're going to drive four T-posts into the ground bend our cattle panel over carry it in here and place it now this one's in the ground but we've got one more to do because we're going to kind of do a long archway here leading to the front of the house and also going out to the wagon which is right behind you guys right now so I'm going to go ahead and grab four more T-posts drive them in here and we'll get our cattle panel and kind of walk you through how we're doing this. Let's get started. Alright so like I said we're doing uh, cattle panels with the T-post. Um, so each cattle panel will have four T-posts with it. Uh, so these T-posts we're placing about four foot apart width-wise for our walkway through here and about two and a half to three foot apart this way to support these cattle panels. So I got three more to drive into the ground. All right, so we got the uh, four T-posts in for our new cattle panel and we've got this fine slightly bent cattle panel over here that we're going to use for our next uh, arbor. See the cattle panel just wants to go in and go into place here. We're on a little bit of uneven ground, so we'll have to play with it to get everything level and even. But I mean that's that's pretty good. Again, we're using bent up cattle panels anyway, uh, but all of that'll be hidden when we have beautiful vining plants that aren't wisteria growing over this. And that one, that one actually looks even better than the first one we did, which is good because it'll kind of hide the first one but that's perfect it's just we can straighten it up even put a brick under an end because we're on a hill here and just tie them all the tie them all together like they need to be something like that that's cool that's it well now we need to uh put something put some plants in the ground that'll appreciate this arbor we've created. Let's see what we've got. And so before we actually put any plants in the ground around this, I'm just gonna go ahead and secure this. Uh, it really doesn't need it because of the way this is designed. Um, the cattle panel just presses up against these. But just to pull it a little bit tighter, I'm gonna use some of these to secure the cattle panel to these T-posts just like so. Now just make sure that everything's nice and taut for us. There we go. Do the same there. Just again make sure everything is pulled in really nice and tight. And just uh, going through here and just trying to prepare the soil for some seeds and some We've actually got a couple potted plants that we're going to put in the ground here as well. Grass don't want to give up there, does it? Thank you, production assistant. Let's get in here with the Homatic 3000. There we go. Oh, I like this one better than the other one. This just gets right in there to it. Get my 
go. So I think we're gonna do seeds on the inside and the outside of our trellis here. Just want the whole thing covered in all manner of non-wisteria vines and pretty stuff. Jane, it's amazing what is in the ground, ground here. This is a vintage Bud light can, <laughs> Natty light can. So when I mowed the other day, I left this little micro garden. This is kind of what's left over from the very first Old Bird Farm trial garden. Um, we've got this wood sorrel here, which is edible. Um, you know, they're stuck all out of my mouth while I'm talking. We've got some mint that's spreading. This was something that was put here last year. And then last year's collard greens, which are gone from blue. And the pollinators absolutely love this. So we're just do this thing. And hopefully, maybe it'll go to seed. That'll be determined. But anyway, left this little micro garden right here. And we'll also fill this area out and tie this, it's already got the mint in there, tie this into the um, herb and perennial garden that we're gonna do back there with a bird bath and all this stuff. Too. And encourage the sorrel to grow here. And so I've got my two little moonflowers here. These were started by seed, started from seed by Vicki the gardener. And they're potted up uh, waiting to go into the soil here. So I'm gonna put these at the end of our arbor here. Cattle kind of armor. That was what it was for a minute there. I forgot this. This used to be parking area out here a long, long time ago. We're talking uh, probably up until the 1960s. Um, and I think there is a pretty good layer of pea gravel buried out here in some areas. I, I remember finding it before. We'll try to get through all that, of course. And that's another example of how deep the soil has built up over the years for that old pea gravel parking area to be so far down. There's a lot of it. It's easy to extract the plant out first. That should be about right. I don't want to put the grass back. grass out we just want the dirt and we'll do the same on the other side All right, two little happy moonflowers in the ground here. We've got some more seeds to go in the ground. And after we do that, we'll water all this in and uh, mulch around it. Because you can't ever have too much mulch in your garden. All right, so the first thing we're gonna plant around this uh, arch here, archway, are gonna be lufa seeds. Um, now these seeds are about three years old, so we don't know if they're gonna germinate or not. Um, but there are the seeds, and hopefully these will grow around it. This will be something cool, vining, and uh, actually produce something that can be used. You can uh, be able to take a bath with them afterwards. So I'm going to put these, these seeds go one inch in the ground, I'm going to put three in a hole and uh, we'll see if they grow. All right, so next on the list, we've got some painted serpent cucumbers. So these uh, ought to be pretty interesting. Some kind of vining 
cucumber that we are going to put in the ground plant them a half inch and in seven to ten days they should be growing and uh, produce eight foot vines let's see yep just little little, little tiny cucumber seeds here I'm gonna plant them the same way we did the other ones all right so the last thing that we're gonna put in the ground here today is gonna be birdhouse gourds ought to be pretty cool if they grow this is again this is an older seed as well so we're gonna cross our fingers that it germinates if not we'll come back with something else um, and we've only got four seeds here for this um, planting them an inch down so we'll go ahead and find a place to drop these four seeds in so I think that's gonna be all the planting that we're gonna do with our cattle panel archway here today uh, so we've got in uh, cucumbers, gourds, and loofah, obviously the moon flowers as well. So we're going to put some more stuff in here as well that'll climb over this thing. And I think it will be really cool, but super simple. And uh, it's going to be really picturesque cattle panel archway here in front of the house. So we will see you next time out here on the Old Bird Farm. All right.